Perfect. After some minor technical glitches, um, I would like to wish you a good morning, good afternoon, uh, and also, of course, good evening to all the viewers around the globe. Thank you for staying with us uh, while we figured out the technology. Uh, my name is Regina Shibos, and I'm a research associate and PhD candidate at the Technical University of Berlin. And um, as the moderator today, I would like to welcome you to our Critical Making Consortium Co-Ideation Mini Conference. Um, so in the name of openness, we thought it would be useful um, to have most of the first part of this mini conference made public for everyone. And this is why we are live streaming right now, but we will also be recording this and uh, re-uploading it back uh, to YouTube. Uh, we also have a caption function enabled um, for a little bit of added um, accessibility. And this is in the Zoom, but I think it should also be available on YouTube. Um, and we want to make this event as participatory as possible. Um, so whether you're here in the Zoom uh, with us today, or you're going to be on the YouTube live stream, please use the shared mirror board uh, where we will be collecting our questions for or your questions for the speakers, uh, but also different ideas and feedback that you might have. So check out the mirror board link that we shared with you. So now, uh, after uh, going through all the logistical details, um, I would like to ask uh, to come to our virtual stage, the head of our consortium, Barbara, who will be presenting our goals with the consortium. You can already see the five partners who are also here with us in the Zoom, to, in the Zoom today. Um, and um, in the next 15 minutes, she will be talking about uh, what we are planning with our consortium, which I think will also set, shed some light um, on why we are organizing this mini conference today. So over to you, Barbara. Thank you, Regina. Yes, hello, everyone. My name is Barbara Kieslinger from the Center for Social Innovation. I'm here today in Vienna, in Austria. And um, I'm happy to tell you a little bit of why we are doing this and who we are. Why are we doing uh, this project on critical making? And the thing is that I guess most of you have, during this COVID crisis, seen how uh, how fast and how flexible and how incredible the maker community actually all over the world responded to the shortage of um, protective equipment, for example, in hospitals uh, and, and, and other kind of devices that were urgently needed. And so we have seen here, as we said, around the globe, an incredible response from the maker movement and seeing a high potential for social innovation. But this was only, so to say, one part of it. I mean, most of you also, probably from the makers, know how much maker communities have already been active in other kinds of bottom-up grassroots initiatives, be it in the humanitarian part, uh, in humanitarian work, be it in in training for um, for students. Uh, again, all over the globe. So we have seen that there is a lot of um, of potential for uh, transformative innovations going on in these places. And also, um, as we were discussing and analyzing um, cases in other projects, we see that there is a lot of responsibility towards responsible making, uh, sustainable making, and, and, and real, as I said, social innovation potential in these places taking place. And on the other hand, this is, comes more now from a policy perspective, um, uh, and from a, from a political discourse and, and focused more on the research agenda so far, there is this concept of responsible research and innovation, which has been discussed uh, quite a lot in the last years in Europe and has been supported by the whole big research framework program. Um, and it includes various aspects. Generally, it aims at including also a whole society in the research process and supporting also responsible, um, socially innovative um, and a social constructs uh, and constructive research and innovation that addresses societal needs. There are various aspects in it. Uh, there are um, different keys in it, as we see here in the middle, like ethical considerations, gender equality, science education, 
public engagement, openness, all of these things uh, have been promoted, but as we think mostly on the research agenda and the I and the in this re responsible research and innovation and also the, the, the grassroots I, so to say, has been mostly neglected, we feel, and this is why we came together and set up a pro this project, Critical Making, where we try to bring all of this together. So on the one hand, we have this responsible research and innovation um, discourse. On the other hand, we have um, these bottom-up grassroots initiatives taking place. And we have uh, 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 in these grassroots initiatives a certain feeling for critical responsible making. And we want to bring this together. And we have looked into and have chosen three specific areas that we want to tackle which is uh, especially the gender issue, um, young talents uh, in the sense of uh, bringing making into education and openness in the sense of open hardware, finding new ways of promoting open hardware uh, and making it also socially accessible. And we will do this all in a kind of analytical framework, which I also will quickly address. So there has already been um, coming up uh, a set of principles, as we call them, the principles for critical making or responsible making. Uh, it emerged from the DOTS 2019 um, get together. And we also in other projects then adapted it a little bit. Important thing is that, you know, that there is a consciousness of what you do when you make something like make things that make sense, don't produce extra that is not needed. For example, share the knowledge when you're making, um, build for the continuity, uh, share how you make it. And all of those things are principles that uh, we want to study in how far these are really um, taking play, uh, being applied and how they can, for example, be, be further applied for, for the benefit of society, so to say. There is a theoretical analytical framework behind that also that is based on the grassroots innovation movement by Smith and colleagues. And uh, it's kind of, it, it helps us to situate our, uh, our work also and see how we want to look at certain things, you know, not only from one angle, but really look into the different different angles, different histories, different narratives that are actually, um, that it actually brought us where we are and in the pathway, so to say, also where we could go into the future. So we all have on the, we will on the one hand, look into the context or how and where things are happening, including also the political, historical context of it and where are windows of opportunities where are the spaces and strategies that are uh, that give room for these grassroots innovations? And then, for example, as I said, in the pathways, for example, also look into alternative futures. We, uh, as we said, we are looking into three different, we choose, we picked from this RRI framework, very three very specific um, keys that they are called. The first one is gender, which is, and uh, there is a gender action, um, being led by the set aside by my colleagues Teresa and Lisa. We're also here in the meeting today, where we want to co-create uh, three to four measures to counteract this existing gender gap uh, or gender imbalance in maker spaces online and offline. And we, we want to experiment here and find out what are good strategies to overcome this gender imbalance. We have a second action which we call Young Talents, which actually looks into the making in education and how can that be further expanded and bringing maker skills into to the standard curricula. And this one is led by the TU Berlin. And I also, Regina and, and Melanie, her colleague is also here today in the call. And the third one is on openness, um, where we want to look into, again, piloting a program for very small, but, but still open hardware projects and how uh, this can also contribute and advance to, you know, to these goals of the sustainable development goals and uh, open science, finding new ways of, of uh, yeah, open, uh, opening up this innovation process in, in, with, hard, with open hardware. And this is led by Geek and Sandra and her colleagues are also, Sandra and Vicky and other colleagues I think from Geek are also here joining us in the call. Yeah. 
This is just a quick overview that our cases are on um, case actions. They're all uh, in a very co-creative way designed and this we will kick off tomorrow more in detail in co-creation workshops. But um, it's just to simplify that we base our knowledge, so to say, uh, on, on what is there, looking into state of the art, looking into online communities, into offline communities, how it is done at the moment, and then co-create interventions and very explorative, hopefully, interventions, new ways to look at it and to experiment with it. So we got our uh, case action uh, structures. Just to finish briefly, a few key facts about our project. It uh, has five partners, um, small, nice, sweet consortium. Uh, I, I really like it that we are not too big and, and, and work really intensively on these cases. Um, I think I already mentioned most of the partners. We have also VTT from Finland who are coordinating our impact evaluation and impact assessment and uh, Wikifactory, who is coordinating our uh, outreach at dissemination and communication strategies. And the rest I've already mentioned, I think. Um, they're funded by the European Commission Horizon 2020 program, and it's a two and a half years project. So we just kicked off in January. And finally, we have also secured a super nice board of uh, advisory um, uh, advisory members, advisory board members. Um, they will also maybe hop, hop in today or tomorrow. We will see. We will have uh, actually Garnet Hertz is uh, already gave us an interview, and Regina is going to lead over to that now because that's going to be um, his uh, his key intro talk into into critical making for us. And with that, I will already finish now, not to keep too much of our precious time today. Thank you very much. Also, leave a note, a reminder, leave a note on the mural board if you want to stay in touch with us, if you want to receive further information, follow up with the project, or if you have any questions. Thank you.